The rising temperatures are clearly taking a toll on the human health. Over the last few years, we have seen how the intensity and the frequency as well as the scale of heat waves have also intensified across India. And that is why it's really important to have early warnings in place which can inform people about these heat waves. And at this crucial time, a cluster of institutions across India are coming together to make these heat wave warnings more area specific and targeted. And today we have with us a noted scientist, Dr. Somya Swaminathan, who is also the chairperson of MS Swaminathan Research Foundation, to tell us a little about this extremely important project. Uh, Dr. Somya, thank you so much for joining us on CNN News 18. So my first question to you is, what is this project all about and which all institutions are going to be a part of it? Thank you very much, uh, Srishti. As you rightly said in your introduction, the threats of climate change are very real and are now, not in the future. And for large parts of India, heat stress is a very important issue. In fact, it's predicted that uh, heat related deaths in India will go up considerably in the next several decades. And we've already seen that trend beginning to emerge. Now, there are some uh, challenges that we observed uh, currently, which we're trying to address in our project. And these are the following. The first is that the IMD that uh, currently does, you know, the uh, projections for many of these climate related hazards gives data at the district level and it is able to predict the heat wave around five days before or so. And um, it's broader at the district level and also it is based on temperature alone. So there are cutoff temperatures that have been determined for when you can call a certain place uh, having a heat wave. Now we know now from science that it's not only the heat, but it's also the humidity in that place and other factors like the wind uh, speed and so on, which actually, uh, if uh, you know, determine how the body responds uh, and how much the body is able to cope. So we know that other factors need to be featured in. And it would be really good to have an earlier warning system and also much more hyper local rather than very broad at the district level. So that's one challenge. Another challenge is that uh, for people, their understanding and appreciation of heat is uh, limited. Of course, everybody feels the heat, but when does it become dangerous for you? Who's vulnerable? So what are those social and biological and age related or gender related factors that make you more vulnerable that you should be more careful? And thirdly, what do you do and when do you take action. So from the community perspective, individuals perspective also, there are big gaps. And the third gap is from the health system side. While there is a national uh, action plan on heat, there is a national program on climate change and human health. The uh, capacity of uh, the health workforce, particularly at the peripheral level, at the primary health care center and the health and wellness center level, that is still needs a lot of uh, uh, strengthening. So to address these challenges, a number of institutions have come together and uh, formulated a project that is, of course, the MS Swaminathan Research Foundation, the Isaac Center for Public Policy at the Indian Institute of Science, Art Park, which is a center for artificial intelligence and robotics, also situated within the Indian Institute of Science. Plus, we have collaborators from the Sri Ramachandra Medical College in Chennai, as well as a couple of ICMR institutes. So it's a consortium of uh, partners and we will be uh, hopefully funded by a, a foundation to undertake this work initially in two districts of Tamil Nadu and Karnataka, which are prone to heat. And once we develop this algorithm, which will provide early warning for people, then we will test it out in the field to see how it can be used both to target uh, people, community members, but also to target healthcare providers and, and give them more information, knowledge, tools that they can use actually in dealing with uh, this situation. 
right right uh this is an extremely important project and it comes at a very critical time we just came out of 2024 which was declared the hottest year on record globally with temperature surging you know the annual warming was over 1.55 degrees celsius and like you said in the southern states also the heat waves have now become much more frequent mm. uh dr somia we talk a lot about climate change and how it has intensified natural disasters heat waves being one of them but we rarely talk about the long term impacts of climate change on health so is this project also going to focus focus on some of these areas yes that's uh, very important so one generally tends to focus only uh, on climate as a disaster situation so you look at how many people died or were displaced by a flood or a cyclone uh, but there are uh, climate change is a slow moving disaster really it's impacting all of us in many ways without us even realizing it both our physical and mental health is being impacted so in this project we'll be looking over a period of time at uh, at least 10000 families that are living in uh, urban rural coastal dry inland different uh, type of agroecologies different occupations uh, mostly low income uh, families and we will track their responses to climate change particularly focused on heat over a period of a couple of years where we will be able to observe observe what happens actually you know when the temperatures and humidity get higher and the changes um, in the physiological functions like we will monitor heart rate respiratory rate we will monitor sleep we will look at of course indoor temperatures as well as outdoor temperatures we we'll look at their productivity we will look at uh, even things like uh, mental health what happens to stress anxiety and domestic violence we will also try to disaggregate the data by age and by gender so that we can get much more specific about the long term impacts of heat on uh, different functions we know men and women respond very differently we're learning more about that and that will actually help us to even set the cutoffs at which one should uh, uh, start taking preventive action we don't really have to wait for people to go into heat stroke and heat exhaustion and then die that's a very extreme tip of the iceberg we need to address the much larger number of people who are exposed to chronic heat and are suffering both from physical uh, mental health issues and productivity loss which is very important for the economy as well and so we need to find solutions that can make these people more comfortable and be able to uh, work and live you know like they normally would have uh very rightly said like you know it's just not the physical health but mental health as well uh dr somya this is a very crucial uh, decade for climate action um mm -hmm. you know uh, countries are debating about how much climate action that they really need to do and it's it's important that we have an am ambitious plan but when it comes to india and here globally also what are your key recommendations what can we really do and also integrating health into the you know in in, in our plan so what are your suggestions here So climate change you know affects every aspect of our lives right now and every aspect of economy is going to be impacted by climate change and whatever occupation we we are in i think we will we will have to adapt and adjust so adaptation is very critical all these years the climate conversations have been focused on mitigation which is also extremely important because we do need to reduce greenhouse gas emissions but the time for adaptation actually was 30 years ago it's already late so we do need to adapt our agricultural systems need to adapt our health systems need to adapt the delivery of services needs to adapt so overall i would say that it requires a very high level of collaboration and convergence between government departments and ministries uh, it requires an extraordinary amount of uh, collaboration working together sharing data and i truly believe that unless we start doing that that unless we start bringing health and climate and weather data uh, and environment other environmental risk data together in one place we truly won't be able to appreciate uh, what is happening to us and also what interventions are working the other thing i would i strongly believe is that interventions solutions will have to be found tested and implemented at the local level there is going to be no one size fits all solution for the whole of india india is far too diverse geographically agroecologically culturally in every 
possible way, weather-wise as well. And so I think much more devolution. There can be an overall framework and a policy for how we adapt to climate change. But the ultimate decision-making for the exact solutions which will be implemented must go down to the below the district level. That is basically the panchayat level and the local urban bodies, which means that there's an opportunity now with the next finance commission to actually look at this issue and see how we can decentralize both more power and more finance to the uh, Panchayati Raj institutions that are in the best position. Of course, they may need some support and capacity building and technical inputs, but they are actually in the best position to decide for their own area, you know, what adaptation measures uh, will work uh, and what are needed urgently. And they can prioritize, you know, how they want to uh, go over the next few years. But this is an issue that all citizens must get involved in uh, debating. I think uh, neither government alone, nor NGOs alone, nor the private sector alone can solve this problem. We just have to come together. Uh, definitely, like you said, it's not just mitigation, but adaptation is where the focus should rightly be. And uh, we need to empower our uh, local institutions to ensure these, even these, that warnings also reach the last mile. Dr. Somya, thank you so much for uh, sharing these insights with CNN News 80. And you look, really look forward to this important project, which is going to take off really soon. Thank you very much.